Hey everybody, happy July, happy July 11th. Um, can't believe we're here already. I feel like I just did this, but I did do it late last month. So it has only been a few weeks, but welcome to my monthly market update where I am going to review a few national numbers, the Charlotte region as a whole, and then the 10 zip codes that I like to keep an eye on in our area. It's what I lovingly call the North Charlotte region. Um, and I'm going to give you timestamps in the description of the video so that if you want to just skip ahead to your zip code, you can. And then also offer, as always, if you want to know your specific market, because as I've told you, real estate is very geolocal. You can have one house in the same neighborhood, just on a different street um, that has a different value. It happens, y'all. So anyway. I'm happy to offer my services to you at any time for a free home valuation, just to see where you are versus where you think you are, how much you owe, what your equity is, what you could do with that equity. Always happy to talk. So let's get to it. I'm going to do a little screen share. I am doing this very much in real time. I have not prepared at all other than I opened the, a couple of the websites. So, and I texted myself a screenshot um, uh, the NAR research put out a little blurb today, so we'll read that. Um, I'm at a point where I don't even want to guess with interest rates anymore. We just, I know we're all feeling it. We can feel it, right? That the, that things are getting a little wonky out there and it's like, let's lower interest rates, but the numbers just are not caught up. And so until they do, until we get infl inflation softening, um, we're just not going to see rate reduction. So I think I read that they did, the inflation numbers came out and we did fall. Um, it, everything positive. So we fell in a positive way. We're closer to that goal of 2%. So maybe at the September meeting, we'll get a little quarter of a point reduction and then maybe one more by the end of the year. I'm going to read you what he said. Hang on. Let me just, I'll just go ahead and pull that up. We'll go there right now. So the 30-year fixed mortgage rate from Freddie Mac declined to 6.89. It had jumped a little bit last week, almost to 7% again. Um, and then, and it, and it mostly was, I think it was really based around the jobs report being really good again and the economy being strong. Um, oh gosh, I'm talking to y'all still. I don't have, hold on, let me screen share. Sorry. Okay, this is what I was looking at. So as of the when this got posted today, we were at 6.89%. So a $400,000 house with 20% down, that's a monthly payment of 2105 or with 10% down, that's 2369. So, you know, affordability, housing affordability is um, really affecting people. So what she's saying here, the positive is the CPI retreated today, importantly, shelter, which is a lagging component, but more than one third of the CPI had slower gains. So shelter is really more rents, just so y'all know. Um, the, the house prices don't really affect inflation. Um, Jerome Powell could really care less about that. Although when he raises interest rates, it has such a profound effect on all the rest of us. I mean, just with credit card rates, with our ability to uh, leverage any of our assets like our houses, it all just gets so much more expensive. So Jerome Powell indicated to Congress yesterday that there was a path to lowering the Fed um, fund rates if inflation continues to pull. Cool. So that's why I'm saying fingers crossed for that September meeting. Negative, though, he also said, we probably won't go back to the ultra low rates we've seen in the last 10 to 15 years. So for those thinking of mortgage interest rates, the implication has a ripple effect. Buyers waiting for mortgage rates to again be at once in a lifetime lows are likely going to be waiting a very long time. So I did have a client ask me yesterday when I thought rates would be back to where they were when she bought her current house. And I was like, never. And then she said, well, what about like in the fives? And I really, I, I know six months ago, I was saying, I thought by the end of this year, but I, I would say 2027 at this point, which is what I'm telling her. And obviously as that, as I get new information, I will update that. So let's take a look at the fast stats for the Charlotte region. I pulled that up. Um, there's some, there's some telling stuff here. So I'm going to, I'm going to help you kind of decipher this a little bit. 
Um, new listings are up. That's inventory. And as I've told you, this push down on inventory because so many people are rate locked, so many people aren't selling their houses, but we still have buyers. We still have people that are willing to pay these interest rates and buy a house or they're cash buyers. So we still have, have had more buyers than we have sellers. So basic supply versus demand curve, that's going to keep prices up. But as inventory goes up, you just are going to see a push down on prices. Now, if your house, if you want to sell your house and you price it well and you, you meet the condition with the price and the expectation, you we're still seeing high demand. We're still seeing multiple offers, lots of showings, um, and we're seeing the just the competition, the nature of that competition is creating what we call seller friendly terms. So that's price, that's their desired closing date, that's being able to pick exactly which buyer they want to, to meet all of their requirements, whatever their next goals are. You, you want to pick a buyer that aligns with those goals. So that's the real reason why you price I've always used the term strategically, and it really is the best term. Some people say aggressively, or or you can go on the lower end of the range. And that's not always the case. Sometimes it's going right in the middle of the range. It's really having a listing agent that's able to super duper hone in on exactly where the buyers want your house to be based on its condition and its updates and its upgrades and, um, and overall aesthetic and location, blah, blah, blah. So that's why you need a good, strong listing agent to help you with price. Price is so important. And then those pictures got to be really good, so on and so forth. So as we see inventory continue to increase, um, we are going to, I think we'll see a flattening, if not a little back step with price. And you guys can freak out. You can think whatever you want, but this happens every year. Every year this happens about this time, the end of summer. Maybe it's a little early this year. I mean, it's the middle of July. I would say no. This is when we start to feel it every year. So um, if you, uh, hold on one second. Sorry. If you are thinking about selling the, 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 the late summer and fall, it, there is a bit of a lull. A lot of people kind of take a break and um, hold on one second. Sorry about that. Aaron is on a call too downstairs and he had gotten loud. He wasn't loud before. So uh, that's, you know, the, the uh, joys of doing this in real time. So they're also saying nationally that inventory is growing and we can see that it is here in Charlotte as well. So, um, but we're still seeing, look, we're still seeing that medium price go up. Um but we're seeing overall number of homes for sale. So, the, you know, prices are, are based on what's closed. So that's probably what went under contract 30 to 60 days ago. So let's see. Year to date, we're looking, uh, we're up 12% for new listings. So this is 12 month rolling numbers. This is looking June of 2024 versus June of 2023. So more houses to buy out there. And I, I know my buyers are experiencing that. I have a few that still aren't um, under contract that would like to be. Uh, but for the most part, we are winning offers again. Um, our team has always been pretty good at it, but we are seeing a little less competition, a little, a little uh, better um, buyer friendly terms out there. And uh, we are also seeing a lot of buyers cancel over repair negotiations and things they find wrong with the house. And you can't blame them because it's 7% interest having to replace the ductwork or the roof or the HVAC. It just doesn't seem as plausible an idea as good of an idea as it does at 3% interest. So um, closed sales were down a little bit. If when you see um, new listings go up and pending sales go down or, or you see new listings not go up, but pending sales go, um, or the amount of overall houses on the market, that's because things are sitting a little bit longer. Um, so and, I, and that's not the case. Let's see. 30 to 31, that's really not that much. And then we look year to date. We've gone backwards two days. So that's good. Average list price is 
up 6.9% year to day, nine and a half percent year over year. So <laughs> people that waited for prices to come down, I mean, it's just not happening. And I really, as inventory gets better and, and we don't get that relief with interest rates, I do think we're going to see a push down on price. I don't know that it'll be backwards by any means. And certainly depending on how long you've owned your house, it's, you're still way up from what you paid for it. So um, another thing I like to look at here, we've looked at days on market, average price and new listings. So we've looked at everything that I really like to look at here. Anyway, housing affordability is still going down. So here, this is what I was talking about right here, inventory of homes for sale. So last month, our inventory had fallen a little bit, but this had gone up. And so that's really, that's houses sitting. People just, they're not going to pay. Um, they're not going to pay top dollar for a house who's, that the condition doesn't doesn't meet that price anymore. There's just no reason to, they'll wait it out. Um, month supply is going up to 2.3. So historically, um, this is a really good month supply, but based on what we've seen the last year, couple of years, it's up there. Uh, but you know, as we've talked about, seller's market is anything under six months. So we're still pretty far from a buyer's market in that regard. All right, let's go look at the individual zip codes that I like to look at. So that is the end of the national and the Charlotte region numbers. I'm now going to hone in directly on the 10 zip codes that I like to look at, and I will timestamp each of those for you guys in the description. So let's go to 28078, which is Huntersville. And we're looking at 12 month rolling numbers. We are, look, all right, see, price, prices are, are slipping just a bit in 28078. So we're at 510 now. No, wait a minute. I'm at median. I mean, you guys know the difference between median, but I like looking at average. I, I just think it tells a better story because median, I think median price it can be swayed more uh, because you pull those middle prices. So again, whatever, whatever, whatever uh, schematic you like to look at, you just got to look at the same thing. So um, the, the increase Year over year increase, the 12 month rolling increase is four. We it was higher than that last month. It was 3.7. So we're still looking good, guys. And I mean, look, if you look at this, if you bought a house in January of 2021 and paid 372,048, you can expect it to now be worth 592,274. Where else can you turn your money into something like that? That's amazing. Why you get to live there, why you get to use that asset, and then you can sell it as your primary residence and pay no taxes. All right, so 592,274 at a 4% increase. And I write all these down and I put them into a graphic that we send out and we post online so that you can get a quick glance if you don't like to watch these longer videos. Um, price per square foot average, 224 was 222 last month days on market average 25 so that's down we were well it says 24 on here on the one from last month but we're that's down year over year that's down see here so we were 24 last month we went to 25 but it fell again spring market that's very typical all right, now I'm going to switch this to 30 day because we, we want to look at the monthly on these because this is new information. So new listings. So 153 new listings in the month of June for all of Huntersville. And, um, you know, at the height, May 22, we were at 226. So 100, almost 100 less than that. If I went back even further, you would see they'd be, it'd be way up there. People just don't move as often anymore. And we're at 2.3 months supply. So still very good. And right in line with the Charlotte average. Okay, let's jump back to 12 month. And the next zip code is Davidson 28036. Hmm. Average sales price, 791.585. That's up 12.8%. 
And then price per square foot is two ninety seven. So all things being equal, you don't have anything amazing or anything really detrimental about your house. If you're wanting a general idea of what your house is worth, take your square footage, multiply it times two ninety six. That's or two ninety seven. That's like a estimate, right? So you can get an, a a general idea of what your house is worth based on that. But if you really want to know, you gotta you gotta bring in an expert that knows. Days on market is 44. It was 46 last month. It's down a little bit. But, you know, it's big ticket houses just take a little bit longer to sell. All right. New listings. 60. It was 63 last month. Month supply, 3.4. That's what it was last month, too. Cool deal. All right. Let's go to Cornelius. Let me change this back to rolling. 28031. Average sales price, 838591. Average price per square foot is 318. Oh, I forgot to write down the increase. 11.3. That's really good. Last. Last month, wow, we had a big jump. Something, they, some big ones must have sold and closed. Probably something on the lake, a few on the lake. All right, days on market average, 32. It was 31 last month. Did the wrong thing. New listings look like it fell a little bit. From 63 to 65. And then that month's supply. And I'll just reiter reiterate really quick. A seller's market is anything under six months. So we are still very much in a seller's market. So despite, you know, seeing things starting to soften a little bit, you guys, we have a long way to go before we're having to really reduce price to sell our houses or get into short sale situations. Although I did read an article yesterday we are seeing more of those from people that are needing to sell quickly, people that just bought in the last few years and need to sell already, even with increases, just the cost of selling and everything. And, you know, again, based on the condition and, and if they did any updates to the house while they lived there, um, we're seeing them happen to uh, do some short sales, but still historically very, very, very low. When you see the year over year numbers be jump like 100%, it's because we were in forbearance for a long time. You couldn't foreclose on a house. So when you see foreclosure numbers jump way up, that's why. All right. Average sales price is $437,994. This is $28027. This is what I call the 73 corridor of Concord, um, but it does stretch more rural. So it, it does pull in some areas that have really softened. So I'm super excited to see that we're up 1.1% because they have been falling. I'm going to say for at least a year now, we've been seeing it's teeny tiny, like 0.7 was what it was falling last, year. but it, you know, it had gotten to like 3%. So this is all good news. See? So December, I guess it jumped a little bit. Yeah. It started falling. Yeah, January 2023. Now it's coming back up. And look, we're in the positives. We're 1.1% over. Yay! All right, let's see how that price per square foot's doing. 211. Days on market. 27. Let's go to one month. New listings, 104. We were at 124 last month. And then month supply, 2.4. That stayed the same. Okie dokie. What's next? 28115. This is the, what I call not the lake side of Mooresville. So this is the other side of 77, think downtown Mooresville, that side. Um, when you see two Mooresville zip codes have grossly different average prices. 
you're like, what the heck? And it's because you got water on one side. Um, so this is another one of those zip codes that has struggled. I mean, look at this. It's like a freaking heartbeat, I think is what I said last month. So it looks like of the last three years, it peaked in July of 2022 and then it dropped. And then it's just been like crazy. But so we're still, I mean, you know, if you bought your house in 2021, you're still doing great. 403, sorry, 403, 549 versus... 286, 379. It's just incredible to me. I just love that about real estate. But we are, um, we ha this one has not called up yet to its all time high. So this will be fun to watch. So we're still 3% down. 197 for price per square foot. Days on market. Whoops. 38. It was 39 last month. All right, now let's switch this to monthly. Oh, that was all monthly. Darn. Did I switch it? Hang on. Let me go back and look because I don't want to be wrong about all this. Okay. Okay, no, no, no. So now we are in the positives. Okay, good. So they had, okay, this all makes me feel so much better. Ignore everything I just said. As a matter of fact, I'm going to timestamp 28115 as of right now. Okay, so we're looking at 425390 for your average price, which is 0. 0.6 up. Yay. Because last month they were 0. 0.4 up. So going in the right direction, price per square foot average. That's why I have to remember to switch it to that rolling number, 193. Days on market. This won't change much. 40 versus 38. All right, now let's go to monthly. Okay, month supply. 2.8, was it 2.6 last month? New listings, 95, and they were at 90 last month. All right, 28117. Let's switch back to that rolling. Nine oh nine nine oh three. Okay, so that is the difference between a zip code on the water and the same town, not on the water. And in a lot of cases, same schools and everything. So there you go. All right. That's up 10.8%. That price per square foot is 287. Days on market, 42. Switch to monthly data. Month supply, 3.9. Wow. What was it 3.5 last month? That's getting close to that six months, guys. New listings, 136. So they must have some listings that are really sitting. I know they have a few like mega million dollar listings that just take a while to sell. So I think historically it probably has always been higher, but yeah. That's getting there. All right. My favorite zip code, 28262. Now I say that because I think this is 28262 and 28269 of all of the zip codes I follow. These are what I still perceive as the best buy. Um, all right. Let's go to rolling. Let's go to average sales price. And this is why it's been very steady increase. You haven't really seen the fall off and it's because it's still under the Charlotte average. So when you're looking at affordability, this zip code has it. Plus it's, a, it's I mean, location wise, drive into uptown, really drive to anywhere. You've got access to so many interstates and major roads. You're close to lots and lots of shopping and restaurants. Um, the schools are not great which is one of the big reasons why it, the prices have not caught up to be at least be at the average in Charlotte, um, in my opinion. But if you don't care about schools, don't have to worry about schools, but you're wanting a really good bang for your buck buy-wise, 28262 is, is where you should be looking. And 28269. So 369, 151, and that's up 4.3%.
price per square foot, 196. Days on market, 30, that's fantastic. That's supply, 2.2. That's our lowest so far. I, I want some listings in this area, you guys. If y'all know anybody in that zip code that's wanting to sell, send them my way, please. New listings. Oh, I gotta, I'm like, 468? I gotta switch to monthly. 45.2. No, 45. It's up 45.2. Last month, 76. Am I looking at the right? Yeah, wow. That really dropped. Woo. Let me go back to month supply. Yeah, it's still 2.2. All right. This other of my favorites. So that same general area. It's like it's um West Hunters, not West, East Huntersville. University area, exit 18, heading towards UNC Charlotte. So that's what these zip codes are. That whole Prosperity Church, Mallard Creek Church, going back in there, if you're familiar with all that. All right, let's go rolling. Look at average sales price. Again, see, just this just keeps going up. We haven't had the big drop-offs like we had with all the other ones, and we're still under the Charlotte average. So as the overall population of Charlotte grows, people are going to be looking for affordability. All right. Price, average price per square foot. Wow, it keeps jumping all over like that. 203. So we were up 2.4% on average sales price. I didn't say that out loud. Days on market, 32. Switch to that monthly data. Month supply, 1.8, ding, ding. Good job, 28269. We got 121 new listings, that's down to, yeah, it was 123, so just fell a little bit. Okay, 28037, this is Denver, the zip code's, struggled a little bit too. Um, again, it's just, you know, it's coupling that waterfront and, and, you know, that Denver, you got verdict Ridge and all that with, they've got a good bit of new construction out there. And then you've got really rural areas. So this, this price per square foot calculation with your square footage isn't quite as reliable in this, in these zip codes like this, when, when you've got such a vast difference, what style of home. All right, let's go to average price. Yeah, see, still falling. 538, 881. That's down 6.9%. Price per square foot, 232. That ain't bad. Days on market, 42. Why am I pointing out days on market? This gives you a good perspective, like, okay, if I am going to sell my house, how long do I have, can I on average expect that it's going to be on the market? So if you can stomach a month, we're about there in most, in most of these zip codes. If you hire Lewis and Kirk, it'll be way, way, way less than that <laughs> with seller friendly terms. All right. I had to do a little humble brag there. Let's go month supply. Again, this is if all of the houses that are currently on the market sold, how long would it take all of them to sell? 3.3 so, months is the answer to that question. Anything under six months is a seller's market. So we're still, we're get, you know, we're getting more toward a balanced market, but we're still, we are still seller market. New listings, 84, that's down too. So that'll help a little bit with inventory, which will help with price. But again, that's very much because it is late getting to be late summer. Not on the calendar, but as far as people are concerned, because people, you know, they want to move when their kids aren't in school. That's why we see another jump in December for closing. So October, November is another good time to list your house. 
All right, and the last zip code that we have is 28081, which is Kannapolis, another really good buy that I love. Um, especially that West Ave district, that little downtown area, so cute. And um, with 85 and 73, it's not a terrible commute into Charlotte. Plus, Kannapolis is so da dang cute. Um, I would really, really love to own an investment property near the Cannonballer Stadium. Y'all know how much I love baseball. So, all right, we're looking at 313, 250. That's at 4%. Yay. So this is another one of those um, that we had, well, it's been pretty consistent, but I feel like their year over year had fallen a little bit for a minute. No, we were back up last month too. Okay. Scratch that. That's not true. 28081 is doing good. Nice, healthy increase in the market. Very sustainable. Let's look at what that price per square foot is doing. 196. That's the same as 28262. Pretty good. That's kind of a neighbor zip code there. Days on market. 32. Fantastico. Let's switch over to this monthly data. Month supply 2.5. And then new listings 58. So 58 new houses went up for sale in Kannapolis in the month of June. So there's your numbers, guys. I think overall, still just a really good, strong housing market. I like this so much better than when I was tracking numbers two years ago because everything was jumping so exponentially that it just felt unsustainable. And everybody's like, when's the bubble going to burst? When's the bubble going to burst? When are we going to have a crash? And I would say the crash has been just this drop in, in people that are willing to sell their houses. So many people do not want to lose their interest rate. So they're staying put, even though maybe they would like to move. Maybe they would like a, another bedroom or a bigger backyard or whatever the motivation. They're really what we're calling rate locked in their house. And so it's just keeping inventory down. So as long as supply is less than demand, we will continue to see houses go up. And with Charlotte growing the way it is, specifically our North Charlotte area that we're watching, it's just going to continue to happen. We're just going to see it, you know, more sustainable at three to four percent versus, you know, 17 percent. So anyway, if you have any questions about your specific address, neighborhood, zip code, if it's not on here, let me know. And I'm happy to share those numbers with you. Otherwise, we'll see you next month. Thank you.